Only one person is saying it. Invite him into your vehicle. Invite him into your home. But most importantly is invite Jesus into your heart. Don't you remember and say, invite Jesus into your heart. So here were so many sheep, but the journey to manifestation for Peter began with Jesus entering into his sheep on the Sea of Galilee. Let's read on, verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Nevertheless, can I hear you say nevertheless? Now, when you've tried everything else and it feels, and some people are still trying other things and trying their own human strengths and efforts, you will never experience the fullness of manifestation until you abandon self, until you abandon your human efforts and rely on God. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I never tried it before. It doesn't sound scientific. It doesn't sound logical. But nevertheless, at Thy word, I will let down the net. The doctors may have given a contrary view and a contrary report. Nevertheless, according to the word of God, I will try Jesus. I will try the miracle worker. I have fallen, I rise, falling and rising, falling and rising. But nevertheless, at thy word, I am going to do something new. And let's read on. Uh, perhaps he knew Jesus as master. If you look at that place, let's look at that place again. And look at the use of words. Came to pass as they pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesis and saw two sheep standing by the lake. For the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. When he had left speaking, he said, Simon, launch out into the deep. Let down your net for a, and let down your net for a draught. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master. Can I ever say master? He didn't have a relationship with Christ yet, but he called him master. When he saw, perhaps he's heard of things, the testimonies and things happening around him. That he never had the personal experience yet. He wasn't a disciple yet. So he was one of those that would say master. Today we have many people who say Jesus is their master. They can pray in the name of, of, of Jesus because they see him as master. Yet without a personal dealing, without a personal touch, without a personal interaction with Jesus. It could be the master. He is the master whether you agree or not. He controls everything. Him and his father are one whether your religion agrees with it or not. You like can equate him with prophets, or equate him with a, 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 a miracle worker, or church founders. He is still the Lord. He is the master of the universe, whether you like it or not. But we see Peter is about to transition from just the blanket use of the word master, the church going use of the word master, the churchly, the priestly, or the, uh, the Christianly use. I ever say Christianly, have a Christian name. I was born to a Christian family. My parents have always had him as master but have you had a personal encounter with him we see here it was like he knew jesus as master because of the influence he wielded at the time but not yet as the lord of his life perhaps he knew him as for the miracles he performed right at this point i think thoughtfulness came in can i really say thoughtfulness it's going to take a, a thoughtful person to experience manifestation. He became a little thoughtful about the things happening around this man. So I can actually, I think I can, I can have the best, not just a miracle, 
where I can have the Lord into my life, into my heart as my Lord and Savior, and I will have the best of life. Verse 7, and they beckoned on their partners, which were in the other sheep, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the sheep, so that they began to sink. Verse 9, or verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Peter has suddenly been convicted. Peter has transitioned from just saying master to an intimate, the beginning of an intimate relationship with Christ. So I'm a sinful man. Oh, Lord. Verse 9, for he was astonished. And all that were with him are the draught of the fishes which they had taken. He's no longer just seeing the harvest of fish. But he's beginning to seek for a personal dealing with Jesus. Verse 11, verse 10. And Jesus connected. Jesus connects where there's faith. Where there's faith, there's connection with God. Faith in the living God. Where there's that faith in God that he can do all things, as far as taking away sins, things begin to turn around. And things will turn around for somebody here today. I thought I would hear a louder amen. I know I'm not preaching motivational preaching today. I said things will turn around in the area of your relationship with Christ today in Jesus' name. And so, verse 10, was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Hey, look at the miracle, thou shalt catch men. You know, which one is better, catching fish or catching men? I didn't hear you. I said, let me get some response from you. Which one is better, catching fish or catching men? No, if you can catch men, you can also catch fishers of men. So if you can catch men and catch fishers of men, you also have fishes by associative <laughs> reasoning. If you can catch men, you can catch doctors like Luke. If you can catch men, you can also catch people who change the equations for generations to come. If you can catch men, you can catch kings in the making. If you can catch men, you can catch deliverers waiting to manifest. If you can catch men, you can catch people who can turn the world upside down for Christ. If you can catch men, you can depopulate the kingdoms of darkness and depopulate the prison houses and set captives free. If you can catch men, the world will not remain the same. The community will not remain the same. Today, you will catch men. I want you to say that to your neighbor, you will catch men. In Jesus' name. Peter's journey to manifestation began with encountering Christ in such an unusual, unnatural way. Peter was called... Yes, his initial reaction to Jesus' miracle was one of humility. Look at the humility there. It takes humility to be saved. Look at his note on unworthiness. I'm not worthy. He says, as if he fell down. I mean, before you fall down, and I pray you come back to that point where you, when you go to God in prayer, you learn to fall down on your face. You go on your knees. You humble yourself before God falls on his knees and says, depart from me. I am a sinful man. He understood that all had sinned and come short. He identified that. He identified with the fall of man. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. At this point, he's not blaming anybody. Some people, they will blame America. You prayed and God brought you to America. Yes, we know the, the world is corrupt everywhere. Darkness everywhere. But you're here to manifest. Don't you never say manifest. Thank you very much. Say it again. 
Now, I want you to get up on your feet and go to five people and tell them, manifest. A miracle is taking place already. I can sense the disorganization in the kingdom of darkness already. Commotion, commotion, commotion in the kingdom of darkness. God brought you to church today for a purpose. From today, you begin to manifest. I say from today, you begin to manifest. Peter's acknowledgement of his sin was a first step towards salvation. In the same way, true repentance begins with recognition of our sinfulness and the need for a savior. Let's look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3.23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Peter recognized that, that all have sinned. That's why he said, depart from me, from a sinful man. You know, this sort of prayer is not a prayer that's meant for just sinners out there alone. <laughs> this prayer is meant for anyone who is falling short of a glory of God in their life. It could be a minister, like I desire. It could even be a backsliding prayer warrior who is supposed to be standing in the gap for a nation and who needs to take on the garment of humility and say, we have seen as a nation, the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name will do what? Humble themselves. There are virtues that are not so evident in the Christian world of today. Humility, patience. Are people be patient in prayers. I, I, can, I can imagine at the Mount of Transfiguration, they wouldn't even remember food. Right? For them to even have come apart with Christ, it meant they really had a sense of loyalty with Christ. They said, come, let's go up the mountain top. They followed Jesus. So it wasn't just a call that came to at salvation, but we can see the continuation of response to that call. The Bible tells us today to go out and preach the gospel. If we're truly called, the same way you responded to Christ when like at the point of salvation is the same way there will be progression. In fact, there will be growth. In fact, there will be transformation in the way you respond to the call of Christ in your life. There is such growth and progress, such increase in obedience, the obedience of faith that will lead to your manifestation. I'm trusting God we will get back there. As I'm trusting the Lord, we will get back there in Jesus' name. That's where the real prayer should come. That's where the drive should go towards. Not just the miracle, not just this and that, the fun, fair things. That will get back to the root of our relationship, the foundation of our relationship with Christ. Let's look at And Peter grew in this faith, this transformative journey. There were struggles. Get this right. There were struggles and manifestations of the DNA of Peter in, his, uh, and in terms of his physical attributes. So Peter was, had struggles, right? There was still that, those attributes. But as he grew in faith. The Lord was transforming him as he grew in faith with every challenge. The one thing I realized with Peter is this, and I'm really learning a lot from the life of Peter. Each time the Lord rebuked him, he came to a point of humility again. When, even when he was a little off, trying to go otherwise, even when he denied Christ and saw Christ, he remembered he remembered. He always remembered. He always remembered. He always maintained the attitude of humility. Can I ever say humility? Can I ever shout humility? Humility is looking for a home to go into. I pray as you leave here today, it will follow you. There isn't a whole lot of humility today, even in the Christendom. 
We don't allow ourselves to be corrected by the Lord. But it's even worse off when he uses people, maybe who are over us, to speak to us. You will see there's always that resistance. It's human to have a sort of resistance. It's the Adamic nature to have a sort of resistance. But it's for humility to take precedence, to take over and say, well, he means good for me. And I see what he's trying to do. And you are thoughtful. Say, Father, thank you because there are people who care about my spiritual life. And you know this church, your spiritual life is our, your spiritual welfare is our, I think we've forgotten that motto. Now we have achieving heaven's goal. But we didn't abandon your spiritual welfare is our, is our concern. And I pray it will remain our concern in Jesus' name. As I pray it will remain our concern in Jesus' name. Peter grew in faith. Can I ever say Peter grew in faith with every challenge, in the, even in the midst of doubt? Let's look at Luke chapter 8, verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. He said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Verse 23. Am I in the right place? Verse 23. Praise the Lord. But as I said, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water. And they were in jeopardy. Verse 24, everybody. Read louder, please. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and the seas, and there was calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they be, being afraid, one the saying one to another, What manner of man is this? Or he commanded even the winds and water, and they obey him. Uh, I know, not adequate time, but we're going to look at, let's look at some things about Peter. Still talking about Peter and this transgression, or uh, sorry, trans. Uh, Progression, I mean to say, not transgression. He's left transgression away apart. But we see progression. Let's look at Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. From Sea of Gennesaret, we see now, Luke 9, 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. And authority over all devils to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Praise God. We see here ordination of Peter. He was called, just like with the 12, other 12, I mean, him included the other 12, and he was given power and authority over the devils to cure diseases. Yet humility is still there. Let's look at Luke chapter 9. We we'll skip our text for today, 28, verse 28 to 36. Let's skip to 46 and see. Verse 46 of the same Luke chapter 9. Then there arose a reason among them which of them should be greatest. And Jesus, read with me, and Jesus perceived the thought of their heart, took a child and sat by him, and said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. We see here there's the discipleship part of this mentoring that has actually begun. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. We forbade him, but he, fo he followed uh, not, uh, not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for, for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 10, we read verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed over, uh, appointed all the seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself will come. Verse 2, and Jesus, for therefore he said unto them, The harvest tree is plenteous, or the harvest tree is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We see Peter once again with the rest, submitted to instructions, and goes out to preach the gospel. We look at verse 17. I 
accountability, part of discipleship, accountability. Can everybody say accountability? They had power. They had gone to preach. Verse 17, read with me, everybody. And the 70 did what? Returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils were subject unto us through thy name. Let's read to verse 20, everybody. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding. In this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written. Can you say, Lord, puncture the, what was supposedly going to blow up their head, was supposedly going to balloon them, make them feel bigger than they, were, they thought, you know. The Lord said, before you get too excited, let me put a little pin on the balloon of potential pride so that you can remain humble still. I want you to remain humble still. Turn to everybody and say, remain humble still. If humility brought you this far in life, you need to continue in that humility. Say that to them. Some people, you know, when Jesus said that, <laughs> would have started their own ministry. Uh, and so, in fact, they will call it demon chasing ministry. You know, forget, they just finished the transfiguration part. Mountain top ministry. Mount of transfiguration. Now, give me names. Give me the type of names. Let's explore a little bit. Now, give me names. Give me names. Let me take from the right. What sort of names? You, for someone who has been to the Mount of Transfiguration, what sort of names do you think that ministry will be called? Yes. The Lord is coming soon ministry. Maybe not for a Mount of Transfiguration. In the Mount of Transfiguration, I know Jesus showed them about his death to come. Uh, Jesus is dying soon ministry, maybe. Uh -huh. What other ministry? What would they call the ministry from the center? My visitation ministry. I had one here. What would they call the ministry? No, I didn't hear that word. I think I missed out. Eh? Restoration power ministry. Transformer ministry. No, oh, it's electrical now. It's sounding more electrical. Transformation power ministry. Demon whooping ministry. Let's take to the left. What would they call that ministry? Give us one. Give us one. Eh? Transfiguration tabernacle ministry. Transfiguration what? Tabernacle ministry. Now, don't you anybody and say, we are Deeper Life Bible Church. Don't run from this meeting. And we're hearing about transfiguration power, camera moving ministry. The media team was. <laughs> Somebody praise the Lord. Whenever God shows you a revelation, it's usually for greater responsibility, quite all right. It's not for you to desert fellowship, the fellowship of God's people. It's for you to actually get more humble, be more accountable, and wait for your time. When your time comes, you'll be manifest. And even in that time, from this moment, you can be manifest. Manifestation does not entail starting a ministry. These people remain with Jesus. They were discipled by Jesus. They were not there yet. There were many things in their life. There were many heights they needed to, to climb. They did not truncate it. They submitted themselves to discipleship. Now let's look at Mark 2, chapter 10, verse 32. Many people are not able to manifest because of their betrayal or denial of Christ, especially in the public. Matthew Chapter 10, I read verse 32. They confess him as Lord, but not before men. In the secret, they may do that, but when it comes with dealing with people, they, don't, they just they fidget, and then they cool off, and then they die off. If you are in that situation, the Lord is in the business of restoration. He's going to bring you back alive in Jesus' name. Matthew 10, 32, let's read together now. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 33, everybody. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, 
which is in heaven. You say, I don't say it, but does your dressing deny Christ? Or does it portray Christ? You may say, he's your Lord, he's your master. He's, he's your master. But are you at that point where he's your Lord and where you can submit literally anything? Anything. Anything. You understand that your body is his temple, the temple of his spirit. You understand that you do not live for yourself, but you live for his glory. You understand that it's not about you. <laughs> You're just a creation. The human vehicle will soon become dust and be in the sand. But that he put his spirit within you in the system and in the world for a purpose. And that purpose will be manifest. In the name of Jesus, it will be manifest in my life. How about you? In Jesus' name. We see eventually Peter becomes the rock. He assumes leadership role. He experienced many significant events. The transfiguration of Peter's role as a leader among the apostles was so evident and pronounced. His boldness in confessing Jesus as a Messiah. Remember the point where he, he forsook the Lord and because of a threat to his life, he put it behind him. On the day of Pentecost, thousands. Can I ever say thousands? Can I ever say thousands? Maybe close to 3,000 people, men. Maybe much more if you want to count women, merchants, professionals from all over the world are gathered. And uh, after waiting for the promise of the Father, there was greater manifestation. Can I hear me say greater manifestation? And he began to preach the gospel. The same gospel that he was preaching from the formative years of his ministry, he was still preaching the same gospel. He has not transitioned from preaching Jesus as the Lord and Savior to prosperity only yet. Favor me. Give me, give me, give me, give me prosperity. I uh, donate to my, uh, now not just donate to the work of God, but I, I have my own uh, enterprise here. Uh, you know, no, no, no. He has not transitioned. It remains Jesus only. Can I hear where say Jesus only? Can I hear say Jesus only? And Jesus ever. And Jesus, our song will remain in Jesus' name. We see greater authority and passion in his preaching, in his evangelism. We see powerful preaching, significant evangelistic efforts, souls getting much more souls getting converted. And we see what we come to better understand the words of Jesus. Upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. We also find his leadership in the council at Jerusalem. If you read Acts chapter 15, time will not permit us to read Acts 15, where Peter is helping to shape the direction of the early church. He's helping to make decisions for the early church and lay foundations for churches to come. And time will not permit me to talk about James, who became a martyr among the apostles, or perhaps John a theo became a theologian, an evangelist with spiritual death, pastoral care. Long in fact, I think John was one of the longest living. He lived out longest of the disciples. So he was there to watch out for the birth of a new church. He was one of those that became a bridge from the old to the new. So he saw Jesus. He had seen Jesus. He was on a mount of transfiguration. He knew Jesus, but God gave him the gift of long life to watch the transition from generation to generation. The way he lived, I look at the uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation. I pray God will give us that privilege. As I pray, he will give us that privilege so that you don't die before your manifestation. You will live long to watch the handover. God is doing it for our general superintendent. He can do it for you. Don't you never say, how old are you? We just celebrated the 83rd, 83rd, am I right? 83rd birthday of our father in the faith. Ask them, how old are you? Say so you're 16. 
Now turn to the other one and say, how old are you? You're just starting kindergarten of a... Now, I don't mean to belittle you, but tell someone beside you, you're just starting. You will be manifest. Tell them you'll be manifest in Jesus' name. God willing, the road is leading to 120. Who knows? And on. Who knows? At 120, Moses said his eyes were not dim. His eyes were not dim. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. We're witnessing a miracle for a lifetime. A veteran, a hero of faith, standing strong, can preach hours upon hours upon hours and not get tired. When will you start now, brother? When will you start, sister? We're still talking about worldliness, talking about your dressing, talking about your comportment. When are you going to start to live out your own potential? You can start today. You can begin today by the grace of God. I pray the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. So as we till towards the end of this, we see here true disciples are called out of sin. True disciples enjoy the peace with enjoy peace with God. They understand their sins are forgiven. They are reconciled to Christ and they understand what that relationship entails. True disciples enjoy intimate relationship with God based on grace. That true this, of course, they understand that true disciples, we see here, true disciples were made to know, have divine assurance of salvation and eternal life. Even when things are rocky in their lives, they're able to navigate through. We see true disciples enjoy divine provision. True disciples enjoy divine guidance. True disciples enjoy victory over sin and temptation. True disciples enjoy the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. True disciples enjoy transformation, enjoy renewal, daily renewal. True disciples are sanctified. Can everybody say sanctified vessels? But Jesus came to a point to sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. And when you sanctify a vessel, it becomes cleaner. And it's even best when that sanctification comes by the purging of fire. You're fired, becomes brighter and lighter, more refined. Gold becomes gold because of the refiner's uh, uh, effort and procedure on gold. And we see true disciples are more knowledgeable, deeper in understanding of God's word. True disciples enjoy divine revelation. True disciples have wisdom and insight into God's will. True disciples find their ultimate purpose and meaning in life centered on Christ. Knowing that they are part of God's grand narrative, part of God's grand plan of redemption and restoration. True disciples make their divine encounters and revelation count for good and contribute to the advancement of God's kingdom and transformation of other people, not just their families, other people. True disciples participate in God's mission work. They are co-workers with Christ. They spread the gospel everywhere they go. They advance kingdom work. They have the privilege of participating in this redemptive work. True disciples have the witness in power. Can I ever say the witness in power? And true disciples enjoy eternal life. Are you a true disciple? Continue and ask, are you a true disciple? True disciples are teachable. They are loyal, true disciples. They do the beatings of their master. They are, even when it doesn't seem pleasant, they humble themselves so they can be better by the correction. Praise the Lord. These three people distinguish themselves from the 12. And not until we distinguish ourselves by our obedience to our Lord, forces of nature will not obey us. Even the forces of nature in your own body will not obey you. You know, at times you think you are the Lord of your, you're the Lord, right? You think you're the Lord, but at times the cells pinch you. They are and you feel something. And you wonder where is this pain coming from? 
where is this one coming from? Something's revolting inside, trying to revolt here and there. Sometimes they break out on your skin, a break out from your body. There is a warfare going on within you, but you will prevail. I say you will prevail in Jesus' name. Say to yourself, I will prevail over every force of nature within this system. You are a system, an organic system, a human system, and you will prevail when you make Jesus your Lord, if you make him the Lord of your life. No wonder Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You will know the power of his resurrection upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I will know him and the power of his resurrection. You will know him as well. As we prepare to pray, we look at that place again. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. We've seen the purpose. We've seen the peculiarity of disciples. And we've also seen the potential for disciples. Let's look at Luke chapter 9. I read verse 35. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it closed and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. I pray you will manifest Christ in your life. There will be a manifestation in Jesus' name. The transfiguration experience revealed the typical response of men I told you earlier. That these people distinguished themselves. They showed they were distinct. It was a privilege given to them. Showed many things. We've learned many things. And as we pray today, you're going to pray one prayer. I say, God, I want to reflect your glory in my everyday life. I don't want to just be a theoretical thing. I want to see Jesus in my life. Jesus all the way. Jesus all the time. And I pray as you submit yourself to Christ, you will see Jesus in your life in Jesus' name. You will live out your potential. Nothing will cut you short in Jesus' name. I say, nothing will cut you short in Jesus' name. You will move from glory to glory in Jesus' name. From manifestation to manifestation in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet as we go to the Lord in prayer. Your manifestation, my manifestation is what we're talking about. I want you to pray for yourself. At what point are you in your Christian journey? What's your level of faith? We've been talking about faith, faith, faith. There's a faith translating to purpose in your life. We've seen privileges of true disciples. You've got an awesome privilege if you've given your life to Christ. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you can do so today. Peter's journey to manifestation began at the Sea of Galilee. Have you begun? Have you started? He was called, he was ordained. But we find humility that led to salvation. The Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whoever believes in him, do you believe in him? To salvation. Should not perish. It's not God's intention for anybody to perish. Say, Lord, I will make myself accountable. Part of your preparation to manifestation is just God putting people to caretakers. And so he puts you in the midst of people to guide you. But it doesn't make those people your Lord. No, 
He remains your Lord. He just put those people in place. Because if we rely on our own wisdom, you cannot get anywhere. We are fallible. Grace of God. I am who I am by the grace of God. People who want to be manifest, they appreciate the grace of God. Even through other people, towards them. They don't disrespect the grace of God. They don't provoke the grace of God. They're not provocative. They're not angry. At corrections. If you understand what grace means, you will give yourself to it. If you understand what grace means, grace for manifestation. 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 Manifest. Last week I told us what manifestation was about for some people. Joseph was manifest in Egypt. Daniel was manifest. He was a taken into captivity, but he was still manifest. Circumstances don't change the plan of God for a life. They don't have the power, especially when the subjects are submissive to God. Locations, especially when divinely led. Or maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you made a mistake and you're in this place. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Say, I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will answer you and I will show you great manifestation. Great and mighty things which you know not. Call upon God. Maybe you didn't hear it the way you were expecting. Maybe, yeah, then fire yourself up. Fire yourself up. I don't have to color it and paint it and sound dramatic for you to understand what I'm talking about. You're here for a time like this. You're here for a purpose. Have you discovered that purpose? Manifestation. You're here to fulfill the will of God for your life. Manifestation. 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 Manifest. The Bible said, for this reason, Jesus was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Manifestation. Manifestation. Manifestation in my life. Father, I submit myself. I give myself away so you can use me. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. Have your way, O God. I might have struggles. I might have challenges in understanding. Divine revelations give deeper, insightful understandings in the ways of God. Why not say, God, I want to know you better? Like Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him. Not just what the other apostles are telling me. That I may know him. Peter, James, and John, and other disciples had first-hand encounter with Jesus. The Paul came and said, that I may know him. They told me about Jesus. I have the word of God. I have the scriptures. But that I may know him. And a definite experience. That I may know him as my Lord and Savior. That I may know him. That I may know him. And his grace upon my life. That I may know him. And his power to save. You will say, maybe I've known God in a certain way. My brother, rise up and pray. My sister, why are you still there? Rise up and pray that I may know him. 
and the power of his resurrection. Forget the experience of yesterday that I may know him now and the power of his resurrection. People who go and drive and grow in manifestation, they are renewed and transformed daily. That I may know him in this situation and his glory revealed. That I may know him. Let me share an experience with you. I once had something called incurable sickness. I suffered. I suffered. But I didn't want to go for surgery. I didn't like to present myself for surgery. And I said, God, if only you can, you say you're a great physician, then I may know you. And I remember one glorious day, he showed up where I was laying down. I couldn't even look at his radiance. He walks in and said, I've come to take away your problem. <laughs> there are witnesses. There was a witness. I'm not just giving you favor. He said, I've come to take away your problem. While I was undergoing the spiritual surgery and spiritual assistance, somebody walks in where I was, wanted to get me up, and said a force kept her back. That was my mother. A force kept her back. Because the surgery was ongoing. And after the surgery, I, I'm giving you my own personal story, testimony. After that surgery, I got up. My mother looked at me and said, your countenance is different. Something happened to you. Tell me what happened. I said, mama, let me tell you what happened where I was laying down. The great physician came to me. He performed the surgery on me. He took away the problem. He told me, I've taken away your problem. And mark it. That was the end of that manifestation. A couple of years ago, just not too long ago, I think about three, four years, I was so sick. Nothing was working out. And I told my wife, is here. I told my wife. I said, every time I sleep, I lay down in the dark. I see a light beaming into the room. I don't understand what this light is about. I was in despair, but I could see the light. No darkness. I looked at the window. There was no ray from anywhere. Every night of the night, I would see rays. Rays of the supernatural. Coming in where I was laying sick. I thought I had cancer. I thought I was going to be over. I was already shedding tears at some point. My wife would cry. Thank God for our region of us here. The fellowship was strong. He prayed with me. I came up to a point. I literally was still raised. I would lay at night. I still raised. And I said, my wife, I see something light. It's like a light coming into the room where I was. But I, I don't know where this light is coming from. But I feel that heaven is visiting me. I knew him and the power of his resurrection. Many years after, I'm still standing here. I am still standing here. I am still standing here. I'm a living testimony. That the same God has saved me from sin. He is my savior. He saves from sickness. There's no mountain too difficult that you cannot climb. There's no valley so desperate, though so despondent, so deep that you cannot cross. Don't allow the devil to allow you to guess and guess yourself to anything. Don't allow the devil to sow things in your heart. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. I just share with us about our general superintendent. The Lord is keeping him. That same God can keep you. Your manifestation. Say, my manifestation. My manifestation. Nothing will cut short your life before your time. Until God is done with you. What do you want God to do for you? That I may know him. That I may know him. That I may know him. You say you want to serve God? Tell him you want to serve him. Make a strong cause. Make your request known to him. 
make your request made to him that I may know 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 him that he will grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hands of our enemy might serve him without fear why not tell God I have been submissive to your word they let everything be submissive everything within this body be submissive to your will for my life that I may know him we will not bury our young we will not bury our old they will live out their destiny it's only after that we will not bury our children spiritually not physically you're a child in the kingdom child of, that I may know him that I may know him and visible power prayer that I may know him if you don't know what to pray about say that we may know him in this church and his deliverance that we may know him I am not going to bury a young person in this church that I may know him I reject it in the name of Jesus I banish the powers of death Jesus conquered death for this reason he was manifest to destroy the works of the devil if you don't know what to pray pray for me now pray for me pray for me if you don't know what to pray about pray for me say because I pray for you pray for me and maybe you're here a man of ministry one of ministry you want the gospel to have its free course through you your ministry will be fulfilled here was Peter it was not a dream ordinary dream it was a revelation it was a revelation God opened his eyes a little bit but he remained humble it was not about his profession profession your profession has got nothing to do with your manifestation he was even a fisherman a fisherman and the Lord said to him going forward you become a fisher of men a fisher of men a fisher of men his profession could not limit I will arise and shine my light is come the glory of the Lord is risen over me manifestation say my manifestation has come my manifestation has come my manifestation has come my manifestation has come young people pray for yourself Joseph was younger than many of you when he was thrown to Egypt he ruled Egypt he was manifest in Egypt he grew in Egypt through temptations and trials you know it very well from parent house to the pit from a pit to Potiphar's house from Potiphar's house he the prison manifestation God will not leave me alone to the manifest. He said, will neither forsake me nor abandon me. He will neither leave me nor forsake me. Father, don't leave me alone. I'm open to your correction. You are the potter. I am nothing but a clay. But I've got your spirit within me. It's a spirit of life. It's a spirit of life. You said you will not leave me. You are with me, even unto the ends of the world. That same power that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body. Do you believe it? I believe it. That same power, it's called the resurrection power. 
Maybe your children are not going, living out the plan of God for their lives. Call them back in the spirit. Call them back alive in the faith. Call them back. Call their destiny. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Call your destiny to action. Call your destiny to alliance with the word of God. Call your destiny a little extra moment in his presence can make a difference. Man ought always to pray and not to faith. Call your career back into alignment. Call your destiny back into alignment. Now, command your destiny. I said, command your destiny. Command your destiny. Call it back. Call it back. Now, command your health. Call it back. Command your health. Come back. Call it back. Call it back. If it's your children, call your children back. In the realm of spirits, manifestation. The Bible says, ah, my children that God has given me are for signs. Listen to this. For signs and wonders. They are not meant for the prison places. For signs and wonders. Listen to me, creation. Listen to me, creation. Listen to me, creation. Listen to me, creation. To me, creation. The less my children will do is to serve God. That's the least. The least. The least. The least. Manifestation. It doesn't just come just like that. It comes by believing God and believing his word and believing he's faithful to keep his word, to cause his word to perform. His word will not go, will not go forth and return void. Nothing is too hard for God to do. Like a child. How can I go to Egypt? Ah, but when he got to Egypt, there was manifestation. One thing I saw here today, these people didn't talk about food anymore. There was nothing like hunger in his presence. In his presence, they were fed. Man shall not live by bread alone. We are not meant for laboring. Your God did not design you to be a laborer. Labor, 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 labor. There has to be something more unique. Pastor Piri. Pastor Piri. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you honor, we give you adoration, O Lord, for how great you have been to us this day. Thank you, mighty God, for your words. Lord, we pray that 
as Peter, James, and John met you and saw the glory of God, the appearance of Moses, Elijah, and the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ on that Mount of Transfiguration. Change our lives. Lord, we pray that our lives will not be the same again in Jesus' name. The Lord, we help every one of us, O oh God, to have the real encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord, the grace of God, the transformation of life will be a reality in every soul in Jesus' name. The Lord, all the deeper experiences we want everyone to possess, Lord, we will possess, O oh God, in Jesus' name. There will be a real encounter of salvation. The great transformation of God in every heart. Sanctification will be experience of everyone in Jesus' name. The power you have promised for us will be a reality, O oh God. And Lord, we pray, Father, there will be a manifestation of our lives in Jesus' name. The Lord, you use us, O oh God, in this life we are living in. The Lord, we're going to have impact in our society, O oh God. Impact in our communities, O oh God. we we'll see the glory of God in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Lord, from this day forward, our lives will not be the same again. Bring your servant, our pastor, before the Lord. Lord, we pray, Almighty God, more grace and anointing upon him in Jesus' name. The Lord, you continue to use him, O God, and expand the kingdom of God. Let your name, O Lord, be glorified this day because we believe you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. A big amen. Thank you, and God bless you. the Lord. Praise the Lord. We've come to the end of the service. Brother, God is, they say God is, God is with Esther. Now, I've been hearing that uh, brother God is and sister Esther are Gideon and Cyril. Uh, let's up a bit so the church can just say welcome again now as the newest latest couple the newest latest couple in town we thank the Lord for the miracle that took place in your lives and we trust that the Lord will continue to sustain this relationship or even manifestation in Jesus name God bless you very much we also want to thank the Lord for our pastor you know uh, we've turned him, we just say, Sister Esther's dad, Sister Esther's dad. But he's also a pastor in this church from our headquarters location. He's been with us for quite some time. Quietly, you know, just sitting in, sleeping in, but still in touch with his church uh, back home where he is. He doesn't miss the, uh, the meeting. I remember the last time we, we talked, he's still connected with the uh, headquarters because there's power anointing from headquarters so nobody likes to lose that one but i i hope we uh, we tried our best to engage you in fellowship here praise god and many of us may not even realize that he's a retired rear admiral uh from the navy a, a general in in the military a veteran and comes in here quietly and just sits with us that's what deeper life trains us to be can i hear louder amen I thought I would hear a humility, amen. So, uh, I want to appreciate the grace of God upon your life, sir. And uh, we trust that uh, you're now part of, we adopt you to, <laughs> to Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. Actually, by extension, yes, we can actually lay claim to that now. Amen. It's just that we don't have some sirens here blowing for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We also want to appreciate the grace of God upon our, our pastor, Pastor Luca Ede Dada. In fact, he's known as the architect. And I never asked the architect, architect. But it seemed to me like the, these are foundational, he's one of the foundational people who designed the church in Lagos. Am I right, sir? Ah, everybody's been architect. I'm getting calls from everywhere. How is the architect doing? How is the pastor? So, that that you know about that's the man can somebody give the Lord praise can somebody give the Lord praise so we want to honor the grace of God upon your life again we thank you for being here with us we pray that you also continue to be manifest in Jesus name 
Amen. Praise God. And all our pastors, we appreciate you all, the members, everybody. God bless you for understanding with us at times beyond time, but we'll do our best to, to ensure that we finish in a timely way at other times. God giving us the grace. We're going to rise up as we share the grace in fellowship. But before that, I want us to also recognize our sister from Texas. They came because of the wedding. Uh, her husband let's just thank the Lord for them we appreciate God in your life as well and if you came because of the wedding just wave your hand the wedding oh wow Sister China Sawi appreciate God in your life Brother Chimdi also came because of the wedding God bless you thank you uh, but don't leave after the the wedding is gone mystery still stay go nowhere praise the Lord want to appreciate all our media team, all our workers, everyone who put their hands, Sister Lola, uh, for, and all our workers, she's like all weather, everybody, if I don't mention your name, but please bear with me, uh, one, it doesn't take one person to do the job, it takes everybody with unity, just getting together to make things happen, thank God for Brother and me, who, <laughs> you know, we have business dealings all the time, but uh, God has been gracious to us. We pray that you continue to be manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. And our choristers, God bless you all as, as, as well. Let's rise up on our feet as we share the grace in fellowship. The grace in fellowship. The grace, everybody. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Now you're going to go to a neighbor and say, surely... Some people just stood where they are and said, surely, goodness and mercy will follow you. You will manifest every day of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen.